Well, I didn't think this was going to happen. I thought they'd work something out. I thought that there would be some sort of a lesser contract that would keep Ezekiel Elliott in Dallas. We've seen this coming for years now. From the moment we started looking at the contract and realizing, you know what, Ezekiel Elliott got a hell of a deal, Chris. Yeah. And they're going to be looking for a way out. 2023 was the earliest possible way out because of the rolling guarantees. It was a brilliantly negotiated contract. It's an example of how an and, and agent. Look, uh, yeah, Rocky Arsenault did a great job of that contract because it had those rolling guarantees in there. It tied Ezekiel Elliott to the Dallas Cowboys. They couldn't unload him last year even though they were paying him more than what I think he actually merited. And I think at times they overutilized him instead of Tony Pollard Definitely. to justify what they were paying him. Definitely. It's, a, it's a dangerous and toxic formula to get right. yourself caught up in. And and now uh, he's he's gone. And his last play, Shereen Williams pointed this out last night on the writer's text thread where we communicate all day long and sometimes all night long. Ezekiel Elliott's last play with the Cowboys. He played center in that whatever the hell that was Stanford band play. That's his final act as a member of the Cowboys, snapping the ball and getting blown up, sir. <laughs> Great job, control room. Getting blown up, sir. That's his exit with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, see? I mean, nobody goes out. I mean, everybody goes out a little clunky, right? I mean, nobody. Nobody uh, gets a free pass in the NFL. Uh, yeah, it's a sad day because, like you said, going to break. This is like the guy that's been a fabric of the Dallas Cowboys. You know, he's been a professional. Man, he plays hard, all of that. But you're also right in that, hey, it was a brilliant con contract. It probably went on a year too long, for sure. Agreed with you 100%, Mike. I don't know. It's probably been two the last two years, really maybe three, Mike, where we've gone, you know, hey, Zeke Elliott, there's you know, was a lot of carries where there's more potential there. Or, whoa, why are they giving the ball to him right now and not giving it to Tony Pollard, who's clearly better? And I think you're right. You know, the fact that he was a top five pick there and the fact that they gave him the money, I think they overused him to justify those things there. I was not shocked to see this. I had been told that this was going to happen, uh, so it, I wasn't surprised. Now, I'm with you in the fact that I think I'm, I would be shocked if it's just over, over. I, I kind of thought this was going to be, you know, knowing the Cowboys and they're loyal to their people. Zeke Elliott, I don't know him, but for everything I've heard, you know, he's kind of a quiet guy and, you know, picking up new life and going somewhere else isn't exactly in – you know, something that he is looked at to be that kind of way, I guess with the, with the, sorry for a lack or a better way I could have explained that, but I think there's a chance he could be back, Mike, to what you were saying. I wouldn't be shocked if they signed him back on like a one-year minimum or, you know, a minimum with a little bit of a, you know, juice in there for incentives or something like that. But yeah, his days of being the starting guy and the main guy are clearly over. Sometimes... You just have to cut the guy loose and let him realize on his own that right. his best option is to come back. Right. And if he decides that his best option is to go elsewhere, you just deal with it. This is the reality, and this is one of the reasons why I try to get people to be a little more sympathetic and or empathetic to the plight of the player. For the, each individual player, he's got one career in the NFL. For the teams, it is this giant football machine with interchangeable parts, and every part in that machine eventually is going to be replaced. The machine keeps going. The machine is the helmets and the shoulder pads and the stadium and the pomp and the circumstance. But the parts will always be yanked out at some point. And you're right, Chris, sometimes it's smooth. Most of the time it's clunky. Most of the time it's clumsy. And maybe this is a spot where it gets ripped off and then kind of gets put back on later. If, if and when Ezekiel Elliott realizes there's no other option out there for me, that is better than what the Cowboys are offering on a reduced contract. And that's what the combine's for. Yeah. That, so, you know, I, I, look at, I look at Adam Thielen, for example. Adam Thielen, I assume the Vikings offered him a reduced salary that, that reflects where he currently fits on the depth chart and in that offense. And he said no. And if you say no, you better know what else is out there. You better have something else lined up before you say no to the offer that's reduced. You know what's behind door number one. Your agent should be finding out what's behind door number two or door number three or door number four. So in the same segment where I praise Rocky Arsenault for the awesome contract he did for Ezekiel Elliott, I'm kind of curious what was done 
to find out before Zeke said no to whatever the Cowboys were offering on a reduced package to know that because if, if, if they know there's a, a plan B out there, that's better then he should have a contract by the end of the week. Yeah. No, I mean, yes, but I, I don't think that's the case. I don't, I, I, I wouldn't expect it to be, you know, I, again, I think Ezekiel Elliott, he's a freak of nature. You know, the fact that he's in, you know, seven years with being a major car crash runner is an accomplishment in himself. I mean, he's a car, like a, like a bring it on car crash runner from the day he got in the league. I think that's going to scare people. You know, Ezekiel Elliott also, you know, he is the type of guy where you know, the fan base loves him. People love him. I think he's a little bit, you know, people, I think in the public eye, still think he's like a, maybe a starting caliber running back. Where I don't know, I don't know if teams are gonna, you know, necessarily want to bring them in for all those reasons I stated, and then you know go back to kind of what you're saying there, Mike. I mean, I think he's he's gonna realize that wow, what the Cowboys love me and the, they they do you know respect me in a lot of ways. They couldn't pay me that money, but you know they'll still find a little role for me and try to take care of me to a degree, you know. But yeah, I I I, I don't I don't know what happened with the amended contract. I feel like the Cowboys probably didn't even want to give them like. Three million, four million. They didn't want to do anything like that. I think they were probably like, no, 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 no. It, it's we're towards the end here, and we down towards you know minimums here with you know playing incentives and bonuses. That's where we're at with the Ezekiel Elliott career. And you know, I'd be shocked if there was even something respectable thrown out there to him, Mike, just to soften the blow. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.